Well, I'm Richard Raffin and I'm going to show you how I make a scoop. Well, not quite this size, but a slightly smaller one. Um, I've made about uh, 35,000 of these over the years, mostly in the 70s when the sales of these paid all my basic bills. Um, haven't made one for some time, but um, we'll see how we go. So I've got a bit of uh, pear, which is um, fairly well seasoned and it's going into the shark jaws of a Vic Mark Chuck, Vic Mark 1, VL100. No, VL for the lathes, this is a VM, or is it the other way around, I can't remember. That's not quite square, so... I'm going to rough this down with a skew. It really pays in this situation for the peel and cut. And I'm going to true up the end and reverse. I was going to leave this just uh, in the square and the cut, but it'll be safer and uh, so that's a half inch skew doing the end and we'll just turn this round should have a better grip then and it's not going all the way back into the chuck I've got a little shoulder which the jaws can go up against So one inch skew chisel and now running up probably more about 1800 RPM. And I should have my other glasses on so I can see if nothing else. Got readers set up for the lathe. don't want in the final piece. This is quite tough this timber. That's the little peeling cuts and now I can feel that I'm clear. Smooth. That's pretty well straight but just flatten it off. It's a good time to practice. So half inch spindle guards, the rest is high enough so that the point of the tool is pretty much at centre, which is there. a one inch asymmetric round nose. So I can go with the tool tilted up because the angle between the top surface here and the surface I'm cutting is well less than 90 degrees so that's safe. When I'm down at the centre, then I've got to bring the rest up a fraction so the tool's tilted down when I'm right in the middle. The moment I move away from centre, then I can drop the handle. Quite wise, there's all this vibration. It's probably my lack of practice. So, I'm going to take this first cut in and so there's a slight kind of groove which is actually a mark where it is with a pencil you can see roughly where it is so it's in there so I've got a curve going in that far and then I'm going to pick up there'll be a slight lump in the middle which I can either look in but generally I feel where it is bring the 
little rounded little curve so I come up through centre, drop the handle and then move back. And if I do it nice and smoothly then the two curves should fare one into the other. And it's again sort of place where I look generally. Put my hand over the top and take the um, bounce out of the wood. Now uh, you've got to be very careful sticking your fingers in there while that's running. Um, I've done it so many times that uh, I know how to keep my fingers safe but if you're not used to it um, it's safer really to not to stick your fingers in there because what can happen is that the wood can drag your finger down onto the rest and you get quite a bad cut. Um, there's no blood because it gets cauterized as you go. It's very painful. And then before you start sanding you measure the depth and you mark the exact depth on the outside. We'll come back to that. And we're going to sand this out with um, you can do the inside with a bit of old 120. Just dust as the voice said <laughs> turn the dust off because it's a bit noisy um, so that's the inside done now we're going to shift the camera so you can see the overhead view so we're back here with the top view and uh, I've marked the exact depth on the inside uh, and that it's important you need to know where you are uh, on the inside depth now the next thing is to use a parting tool to cut in the headstock side of that line. And as we come down you hear the note change. Good nice vibration. And it's just beginning to drop now. If it went all the way through, I'd, I'd cut the, the bowl part off and there'd be a little hole in the middle. Uh, the idea of cutting in on the line is that Provided I keep this side of that cut, I know exactly where the inside is. Um, the inside is one tool width away from this face, so I've just got to keep that face whilst I shape the top. So it's a three quarter inch tool. Well, the other thing I did was sand the inside first, and that's because when I first made these, I used to sand the inside and the outside together and the, the, the rim got razor sharp and a couple of times I slid my finger in and took a thin slice of skin off along with a bit of abrasive and it was extremely messy. So, it's, uh, so sheer cut round the back. Now if you're not quite sure how thick it is, you could drill a hole, one hole in the back because I'm going to be taking the 
uh, taking a, a, a portion of this out in order to um, to make it a scoop. So I'm far enough there so I can come round here once more, a little gentle cut. And generally when I'm there I turn the tool over so I use the long point in and then they go aim the bottom of that cut for the remaining face of the of the parting cut. Right, so I can now drop the rest of fraction because I'm going to be working on smaller diameters and use peeling cuts just to take away the weight. A little bit more down because I'm working on a smaller diameter. I need a bit more light, so I've got to move the light over. Hope that doesn't affect the camera too much. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So the long point in to one side of what will be a little bead, and then I'm going to come in the other side. Make this hand a shade longer. Easing the skew forward with my thumb. Get it in the way. Just take away a bit of that. I was about to part off and I haven't sanded the thing yet. So, just the 180 grit here, 180 which is the yellow. Dust. <laughs> cut this off the better. And then I've got to reverse chuck it. So that's actually not too bad. I could hand sand that which is what I was used to do. Uh, but I'm going to make a chuck for it. Um, just really so you can see a jam chuck. I'll move the waste out in the block a little bit. Now jam chucks, uh, used to use a lot of those before the modern chucks came along which was the first 15 years of my turning career. Screw it up. Now I eyeball the diameter and the aim is to cut the steep taper so the end 
because the screw just fits over there. It's dry, so you've got to be very careful. Uh, there is a little burnish mark there. That should just fit on about there. Too loose. There's a slight ridge that will probably stop it going off on. Oops. And because it's all dry, so to speak, no finish, it's probably best to uh, stop the lathe and put it on. Now, this is not on as tight as could be because of something else I was going to show you. Um, when you're trying to take this off, uh, the wood is just dying to roll up the edge of the tool. That's a bit too loose. So I'm just kind of squeezing it on and see where it gets high the other side away from me so it just squeezes in towards the rest. It's got to be near enough. So I'm just saying the wood is just dying to roll up the edge. So if you go too hard, that's what happens. And it just comes off into your hand and you don't stand any nonsense with it. Let's stick it back on. In fact, I'll take this down just a fraction in there and then it'll be much steadier if this, the rim of the, uh, the scoop here can go up against the, the back of the chuck. That's it. So that's, I know that's going to run through now. So thumb on the rest, that's a f uh, kind of lateral fulcrum for the tool. Um, the fingers are there to catch it if it comes off again. And you're most likely to catch it at as just as you come across the centre because the wood's barely moving. And then just to show how clever you are that it's actually turned on the end rather than hand turned, you can put in a couple of grooves. And 240 will probably do that. Right, so now I need to cut the uh, cut the rest of the scoop off. So that happens uh, on a on a on a, on a uh, little disc sander I've got, which is really just a um, it's a face plate and uh, with a six-inch disc on it. I've just noticed there's a bit of torn grain in the end. I should have checked that. Anyway. Bring the rest up so I've got something to lever my arm off. on a belt sander which is much easier. Here the you've got a difference in speed as you go across the disc. So a little bit more difficult to get the get the shape right. Well, not so much difficult as requiring practice. It's fairly thin just here and a little bit fatter there, which isn't ideal, so I can fudge that a bit by just sanding the, uh, sanding the wings inside. 
and I used to do these in batches of 50 do 50 or 60 in a day and uh, to be viable commercially you've got to be able to do at least nine an hour to this stage and that's it uh, there's a little bit of picked out grain in there which I should have checked um, I never bothered to check at the time when I was doing them because uh, the uh, the wood worked a little bit better than this probably but um, that's it, and then that gets oiled uh, just with a with um, boiled linseed or any other boiled linseed is what I use, and that's it. <laughs>